All right. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, first, I want to welcome and thank you guys for coming to our virtual open house. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, we'll get started then. So running their slideshow. Can can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So um, so this is the open house for accounting and finance. Uh, we're doing this virtually. Uh, so let me introduce myself. Some of you may know me. My name is Alex. Uh, I'm the chair of this department for the accounting and finance. From an academic standpoint, I'm a, I'm a faculty member on the finance side. So this is my office built in building 38, room 108. That's my phone number, uh, my campus address. The easiest way to reach me for some of you who know is actually using my email address. I, I, I won't be in my office all the time, but I do check my email multiple times a day. So if you have any questions, feel free to um, email me. So this is what we're gonna sort of talk about today. So I'm gonna give you guys an overview uh, of the programs, uh, I mean, the overview of SBPA, the School of Business and Public Administration. And I'll briefly talk about some of the programs that we offer here in the department. And then I'm gonna tell, sort of share with you why, why should you wanna come to UDC and why accounting finance? And I'll share with you additional internship opportunities and uh, scholarship opportunities. And then at the, end of the, at the end of the presentation, I'll open up for a Q&A. Now, in the, in, during my presentation, you're welcome to raise your hand and ask me a question in be within that. It, you don't necessarily have to wait till end of the presentation, okay? So um, the School of Business and Public Administration uh, has two departments within the school. Uh, the Department of Accounting and Finance, which I chair, uh, it's, it's covering accounting, economics, and finance. Mostly accounting and finance. Economics, we don't have that much, but we do have some economics courses, which I manage as well. And then the other department is the business uh, management department. So we have management, MIS, marketing, public management, entrepreneurship, supply chain management. All those will be housed within that department. And they have two degrees. One is the BS in hospitality and tourism management. It's a two plus two. Uh, in partnership with the UDC Community College. And then the second, the other degree is the BBA Business Management with concentrations in either MIS, marketing, and or LIT. I'll talk more about LIT later. Uh, we do offer a graduate degree, the MBA, the Masters of Business Administration as well. If you're interested, feel free to shoot me an email and we can talk about it. So the, the, the programs housed within the department, there are two main program undergraduate is the BBA in accounting, which requires at least 124 credits to graduate. And then the other one is the BBA in finance, which requires 121 credits to graduate. Um, a lot of our accounting and finance students, sometimes they like to do double majoring. So double major in accounting or finance. And then by double majoring in them, you just take an additional nine to 15 credits beyond your program. Now, that is not to say you can only double major in accounting and finance. If you are a business management student, and if you're interested in double majoring in business management and finance, or business management and accounting, you can also do that, okay? All of these are BBA degrees, so double majoring is not like you're totally getting a total different degree, which requires you an additional 40 or 50 credits. It's not, it's, it's not that way, okay? It's a little bit more, uh, efficient in the in the usage of your credit hours. And then there is the, the LIT, which is the Logistic and International Trade Concentration. This Logistic and International Trade Concentration is actually open to all majors, not just restricted to business. There There is an engineering student right now, there's a computer science student that is actually uh, concentrating in LIT, okay? And I'll talk more about the LIT in, in a little bit. So overall, our program highlights, the key word is, experiential learning. So we have the VITA clinic, for those of you who don't know, is VITA stands for the Volunteer in Tax Assistance. So it's, you know, uh, students and faculty helping out residents to file their taxes every year. Right now, it's actually running right now. So we have internships and we do have field trips, and I'll talk more about field trips and the study abroad as well. And in many instances, some of, 
students actually do a lot of sim simulations in the course in the, during the coursework. For example, in the uh, capstone course, students have to uh, play a simulation game when they operate a business and make decisions and then compete in the global environment. So just to give you an example, okay? So this is the LIT or the LIT concentration, Logistics and International Trade. So there's a four course requirement. So one is required course, which is the Global Logistics and Supply Chain Management. And then you take one of that required and then you choose any three from the nine courses below. Now, what I wanna highlight note is the BGMT 395, the study abroad. So the study abroad is typically either to China or to the United Kingdom. So yes, we did go to UK last year. And yes, we will be doing it again this year in July. And we're actually prepping it right now as we speak. I'll talk more about that as well. So now, for, if you are a business management or accounting or finance student and you're going to do lit, notice that there are some courses in the second grouping that the, the choose three from below choices, there are some courses that are part of your inherent as part of your major. For example, as a finance major, international finance is a required course. So by being a finance major, that course is automatically taken care of. You don't have to retake that course again. It will count towards your lit concentration. So in other words, you just have to take three more courses that is not part of your program. In fact, if you look at BGMT 311, it's spreadsheet analytics. That course is required for all business majors. So again, for example, if you're finance, you're already out of the four lit concentration requirements, you automatically cover two of them already. So it's just additional two courses beyond your program. That's all it is, okay? Just to give you an example. And as you can see, there are some courses in the engineering and mathematics side. Those, is to, those courses are to cater to the engineering students. So let's talk a little bit about the study abroad. So again, uh, last year we went to the United Kingdom uh, in Nottingham, England. Uh, the school that we went, the host university is Nottingham Trent University. It's, a, it's about two and a half hours north of London. So last year in July, we went there for 15 days. There were six students who went with us. Uh, and this year, as you can see, 2023, we're expecting eight students to be participating. And the cost to go, if those students are selected to go, the cost will be fully covered by, an, by a National Science Foundation grant. So the cost is about 4500 a piece, basically. But the students pay nothing out of pocket. It's covered by the NSF grant. Okay. So let me show you a couple more pictures. So this is, if you look at the bottom left, the picture, that, that's where the highlight is. Uh, as you can see, London is right down to the lower right bottom, and then the red dot is where Nottingham is. It's around two and a half hours, as I mentioned. It's an easy, relatively easy ride up. Uh, if you take the bus, or even if you want to do it, get on your own, you can take a train. It's up to you. It's, 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 it's a very scenic, very nice place, actually. Hmm. So these are just other uh, places uh, in, in, in London that, uh, that we, we typically, after the, 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 uh, the trip, before we fly back to the U S we actually spend a day in London. So you're on your own R and R as we call it, uh, to, 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 to relax and re and recreation over in, uh, in London. Mm -hmm. So these are just some of the pictures that we took, uh, while we were there. Now on the low, on the top, right, you'll see the six students, uh, taking pictures, uh, just outside the dorm that they were they were staying at, right there, and we actually on the bottom right, um, we were taking the picture right in front of the Nottingham Business School, uh, right there. We we took a picture. Everybody's excited. Uh, on the on the on the on the top left, uh, the students are actually engaged in a group project uh, during one of the courses that they took over there. So, very good, very cool. Now, I just want to show you this. This is not England by any chance. This is, if, if you can recognize it, this is actually in China. So initially, uh, actually, alternatively, if we were not to go to uh, UK, we would, we would, another choice would be to go to China. So uh, again, obviously, Jap uh, China just reopened its borders. So this year, we were not able to go. 
next year we'll have a choice to decide whether if we want to go to China or the United Kingdom. So up a choice. So if we were to go to China, we typically were actually I actually have have all the schedule planned out. Uh, I pl- we spend we will spend most of our time in Beijing, and then we'll spend about three days in Shanghai. And on the lower right, you'll see actually the the lower right and the, and the top left is all pictures from Shanghai, and you can see the the pearl uh, the pearl building right there, the that the very iconic land landmark. And on the top right is actually of course is Beijing with the Great Wall. Now the lower left is what I want to also highlight is obviously we're going to be traveling between Shanghai and Beijing. We want to be able to we're not flying, we'll be taking the high speed rail. The high speed rail will take you about four hours from Beijing to Shanghai, and uh, the top speed is a, about 310 kilometers per hour. It's really fast, really fast. I've been on it; it's really fast. So again, I'm excited. We'll see how it goes for next year. Mm-hmm. So um, I also want to introduce. Uh, we have a certificate in sustainable fintech and clean tech. It's a nine credit hour. It's a three course requirement, one required courses, and then there are two electives as we call it so you can choose two out of the three from below now if you look a little closer right uh in addition to that the the financial analytics and models course which is required the other two courses that you can choose from below the global logistics or the marketing research notice that it is also part of the lit concentration so chances are if you are the if you are a lit concentration student Taking, getting this certificate is fairly easy. You just take, you take one course, which is the Finance 350, Financial Analytics and Model. So as you can see, sometimes when we build the courses, the, the, the certificate and the program and the concentrations, we try to get some synergy from the existing courses and try to not having you guys take too many different courses to overload you or to extend your graduation. But at the same time, we want you to learn as much things as possible within your program and to give you some kind of additional um, credential, okay? So let's talk a little bit about a few trips. Domestic one, though. So typically, uh, every year, actually pre- prior to the pandemic, uh, we we brought students to, uh, to downtown D.C. Uh, we actually visit the Federal Reserve Board right downtown. Uh, as you can see on the low, on the up, upper left and the middle bottom, that's right in front, that's in the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve. Now, in fact, on the top left, that room is actually the conference room where the Federal uh, Reserve Board meets during their open market, uh, open market money, uh, the Federal Open Market Committee meets. That's right there. Um, I believe one of the chairs was, was well, uh, it's, it's actually uh, uh, Powell on there. Uh, he he will be sitting in one of the chairs, not there, right in the in the in the middle, right there. And then the top top middle is where we visited the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. You see the it, it shows you how money or 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 currency, the U.S. currency notes, is printed. So again, we 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 plan to restart this downtown uh, field trip. Uh, in the near future, probably starting in the fall. And then on the on the top right and the bottom right and the bottom left is when I lead students to Chicago. So on the top right, as you can see, Charles Schwab. We visited the office of Charles Schwab and uh, they, 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 they showed us the tour, tour their offices, uh, the operations, and then they actually uh, introduced us about the internship programs that they have. On the bottom right, we were actually at the CBOE, which is the Chicago Board Options Exchange. That's where uh, the the it's an actual fiscal exchange where traders actually traded there. So you can see we were there right by the bell, and then you can see right behind us, you see the green red numbers. Those are the 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 prices of the options right there. So we're right there at the at the floor of the exchange. Now on the lower left. Um, we were very fortunate during our visit that day. There is an event organized by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. That particular event was uh, was interviewing the president of the Dallas Federal Reserve. So they were they were talking about the energy prices and the energy industry over in Texas. Very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, we don't get that all the time. It's 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 it. You just have to be there, right there at the right time. At that particular point, we were really right there at the right time. So 
for the field trip in Chicago, yes, again, we're going to Chicago again. In fact, we're actually going in March. This is March right now. I'm actually leaving. I'm actually leaving for Chicago next week. So during our visit in Chicago, we will be visiting again Charles Schwab, as I mentioned earlier, the Chicago Board of Options Exchange right there, and the global the Chicago Council on Global Affairs right there, and then we'll also visit the Chicago Fed. Okay, there's a money museum in Chicago Fed where where there is there, they show you how to identify a counterfeit. And there's also a, a, a display that shows you, you know, guess what is the largest denomination of the U.S. dollar? Does anyone know? Not in circulation, obviously, not in circulation anymore. In circulation right now, it's obviously 100 bucks, right? The Franklins, right? But then, do you know, the largest denomination of the U.S. dollar was, or still is, it is still legal tender. You can still use the note, but nobody uses it because it's so rare now. It's worth more than the face value of the currency. It is a $100,000 face value. So imagine how much it's worth. I don't know, honestly. That you, have to, you have to look it out in the market or something, right? Collectibles. But that's the largest uh, bill being, uh, being, being, uh, being in use before. It has not been used now. Nobody's printing it anymore. So... Let's let's switch here and talk about why why should you come to UDC or why should you be interested in UDC. First of all, accreditation. I'm very pleased to let you know that after five six years of of, of preparation, we are now officially accredited by AACSB. AACSB. What does that mean? This accreditation is held by less than six percent of the world's schools offering business degree. Okay, so it's less than 6% worldwide. So, and then the second one is we are ranked by US News. Late last year, US News came out with a ranking. We're now ranked number 17 among HBCU. Just to give you a little perspective, the previous year, the last ranking before this, we were ranked number 30. So now we're ranked number 17, okay? And then we have qualified faculty. 95% of our faculty, more than 95% of our faculty have doctorates. Now, among my fa accounting faculty, 75% of them have CPA licenses, okay? And then we also have a low student, a faculty to student ratio. On, right now, it's about 11 to one. So in other words, that means what? That means we have a small class, right? Small class means you get more engaged with the faculty, you get a little more closer relationship and more interaction with the faculty. And last point I want to make is the affordability. And this can be explained in the next slide. So if you look, let's say if you are a DC resident, okay, you're a DC resident, you are paying about 8636 right there on the top, right? Now let's say if you are a, a resident in Maryland or Virginia. So if you come to UDC, you will be paying the DC metro rate, which is slightly uh, below 10,000, so 98.36 approximately. So I compare the other schools in Maryland and Virginia, right? If you are a resident of Maryland, you would pay in-state for Maryland. And if you're a resident of, of Virginia, you'll pay in-state for Virginia. Now, so of those in-state I highlighted in red, you can see with the exception of George Mason, if you go to UM, UMBC, Maryland, Baltimore County, or Maryland College Park, as a Maryland resident, you would pay around $11,000 to $12,000 to go to those schools. If you are a Virginia resident going to VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, you'll be paying $14,710. Now, you're not a resident of DC, right? But you're a resident of Maryland or Virginia coming to UDC, you're paying less than 10 grand a year. So if but let's say if you are an international student or you, have a, you are an out of state from none of, not from DC, not from Maryland, not from Virginia, then you'll be paying what we call the non-resident rate. That's around 17,000 here at UDC. And you look at all the other schools, how much you're paying? At least 27,000, more than 35,000 in some of the schools, if you're paying out of state from those schools. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in talking about graduate tuition, but again, graduate tuition, my point here is, is going to show the same picture, basically. It's the same picture. For DC resident, you're paying around 10 grand. So if you are, if you are a, a Maryland resident 
or Virginia resident, you'll be paying Metro tuition for graduate, and you'll be paying 11300 here at UDC. But as a resident in your respective state university, in George Mason, you'll be paying 15000 and in Maryland College Park, you'll be paying 25000 as an in-state tuition for graduate studies over there. So again, what my point here is we are very affordable. So again, if we're now comparing with non-resident out of state across the board for graduate, it tells you the same picture. We, our tuition is at a very affordable 18,000 for non-resident or out of state applications. And if you look at all the other schools, the closest that I can see, I believe is around 24, nine something. That's Penn State Harrisburg, right? And again, you have to factor in where's, if you're paying about 25 grand a year to go to Penn State Harrisburg, you also have to think about the location, right? Penn State Harrisburg is sort of central Penn, central Pennsylvania, right? It's not a big metro area. How about job opportunities? Here we're right here in DC, and you're you're off, you're getting the pay, the tuition to eighteen thousand dollars. So again, it all tells the same picture, right? I just want to I just want to convey this information. Again, why why accounting finance? Obviously, it's it's always in demand. It's always in demand. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics predict that average job growth over the next 10 years in accounting and finance, about 10%. It's about 10% job growth. And again, when, when we say accounting finance, you always think that, oh, I'm, I'm, I don't want to work in an accounting industry. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. If you have an accounting degree or finance degree, you don't necessarily have to work in the accounting industry or finance industry. You know what? You know every industry needs accountants. Right, they have to they have to report their financials. Right, Nike. You you hear Microsoft. You hear you hear uh, Tesla. All the big companies. Do you know that they they need to have accountants? Do you know that they need to have financial people? Right. So you're work you you can be working in a different industry, but working in the in the financial or accounting function within those industries. Right. I just want to also point out um, our accounting program, undergraduate program, has been endorsed by the IMA the Institute of Management Accountant. Okay, and we, I'm proud to say, we are the first university in DC to be endorsed by that organization. And we are the third HBCU nationwide to be endorsed by the IMA. I'll tell you who's the first two. The first one is Morgan State. The second one is Florida A&M. So we are the third HBCU not to push people down, Howard got recently got endorsed by the IMA also, but we are the first one. We are the first one. So some of the graduate placements that our graduates go, um, obviously the big four, right? KPMG, EY, Deloitte, PwC, some of them go to DC government and many of them actually go on to pursue graduate degrees at grad school in Cornell, UC Davis, American, GW, et cetera, and et cetera. Oh, in fact, I need to add one more. I actually have two recent graduates who actually will start the, f the fall in Indiana University in Bloomington. So these are just showing you where our graduates is, go is going. I'll share some scholarship opportunities. Um, the big one is, uh, is, the, is the Structured Finance Foundation Scholarship, uh, but this scholarship actually, the deadline to, to apply is actually today. It's actually today is the last day. But do, if you're interested, you can email me and we can talk about it and see if you have enough time to apply for it. Uh, but you do have to be a student right now to apply and uh, you have to be a business student, undergrad or graduate, you can. I want to point, I want to highlight the Don Dean Scholarship. Now this scholarship is only for undergrad accounting or finance only. And it's a multiple award. In other words, it can be renewed. It, it can be it can be disbursed every semester through fall of 2024. Okay, so it will it can pay you up to you can receive up to three thousand dollars per semester. Applications is going to be opening soon, uh, and the deadline to apply will be September 1st. Now, I want to special especially point out if you know, let's I know you guys, most of you are students. Even if you're not a student now, or if you know someone who's not a student now, and if, that's, if that person is interested in to start school in the fall, majoring in accounting or finance, that person can still apply, okay? 
that can still apply and still be eligible to get the dean scholarship up to three thousand dollars per semester. Okay, so this is very important. I just want to point this out. Um, I will. So if you know someone, even who, if they are not at UDC right now, they can. If as long as they start school here in the fall, they can still qualify for this particular scholarship. And there's also the CMA student scholarship. The CMA is the Certified Management Accountant, which is affiliated with the IMA. That's the organization. This is the certification. So the, the student scholarship, we typically award up to three per year, and it's typically open in the fall semester. And the scholarship is worth up to approximately $3,000. It will cover exam entrance fees, IMA student membership, test prep software, et cetera. Okay. And then we also have the School of Business and Public Administration uh, scholarship, uh, various amounts. Uh, and it's actually open right now to apply. If you're interested, you can apply. So the Dean Scholarship, as I mentioned, as pursuing accounting or finance, 2 or or above, minimum six credits. So you can be a part-time student and still qualify, okay? The requirements is right there. Uh, again, I'll... I'll the, the application form, which is the second part, the second point right there, submit application. I will, I will, I will update the, uh, I will open up the application soon. In addition to that, you also need to submit a FAFSA application. That's another requirement from the from the donor for the Dawn scholarship. Okay, and the deadline to apply is September first. So some of the internship opportunities, um, structured finance association, all these are per paid internships potentially one spot for summer 2023. Um, there's also internship opportunities with the UC system. There is a, what they call a summer institute for emerging managers and leaders. This is actually, maybe this is more like a scholarship, but you go there, you participate in that, in that, in that, uh, in that event, the symposium, and then you get a full, full ride scholarship to go to a graduate program in the UC system, with any program in the UC system, and you can cover that. And some of the internship opportunities will be through NABA, the National Association of Black Accountants, and they have the the um, they have the regional conferences, and then there are, there are firms that recruit right out there from the uh, from the conference as well. And then there's also another another internship opportunity, the Boundary Street Cap, uh, Capital, Columbia Capital, and Freedom Bank of Virginia. It's what they call a tri rotational finance internship. So you'll spend one month. Over the summer, you spend one month in each of those entity, and you learn about how the operation. So you learn about the bank, and you learn about the investment side. And then we also have a relationship with the Defense Intelligence Agency. They do have internships available for our students, as well as the DC Superior Court Office of the Auditor Master. They also have um, internship opportunities for our students as well. Of course, there are many more. I cannot list of all of them. Uh, so that. That ends my presentation. If, the, if you have any questions, um, let me stop sharing my screen. If you guys have any questions, feel free to um, raise your hand or just speak up. I have a question. Sure. Um, this is with regards to the lit concentration um, and those uh, streams to choose stream one and two, those courses, do you have to take them all in the summer? No. Or you can take them at any point of your... No, you can take it at any point <laughs> during your program. Now, okay. if you are a business student, if you are a business student, you most likely already covered two of the four requirements. You automatically covered two of the four requirements already. Then in order to complete the lid, then you just have to take two more courses. For example, you would, that would, you, you would then have to take that, the required course, which is the supply chain management and, and so global logistics and supply chain management. That's the required course. You have to take that one. Yeah. And then you have to take one more from the list of the nine that, that is not part of whatever that you have taken. You see what I'm saying? Because you would have already covered two of those. You just have to take one more, any one, during the fall or spring. Okay. Do you mind please putting back the list with that nine that I see? Sure, please. of course. Yes, yeah. This one? 
Yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay. So let's say, so tell me what's your major? Finance. Okay. So as a finance major, you would have taken this course already. Yes. Fresh analytics is required. You're done. And then as yes, a finance and major, you, finance, so, yeah. right, you would have taken that. So these two courses will be done. So what you need to do is just to take this at some point. Since we're talking about it now, the, close, the earliest you can do it in the fall. So you can do this in the fall and then choose any one of the seven in the fall. Right? Okay. okay. Make sense? Yes. That's it. Or, Thank you. or if you are being selected to go to the study abroad, then you're done. Then you're already done with the three below. You just have to take that 313 in the fall and you're done with the lit concentration. Okay. Right? Okay. Fairly straightforward. So that's, okay. in that sense, it's, it's again, we're trying to make things easier, not to make things more harder, right? We're trying to make things easier for everybody. Any other questions? Anyone? Uh, yeah, the the VITA um, taxes, because I'm interested in getting my taxes done. Is it free? Say, um, say that again. I didn't, get, the, I didn't get the VITA, uh, the VITA. Oh, the VITA tax clinic? Yeah. Okay. So is the VITA tax service? clinic, it's, no, it's, first of all, it's not a certification. It's a, it's a, it's a program where you help uh, residents file taxes. Oh, it's for the residents. It's. The students have, oh, I thought it was a service provided to the students. No, 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 it's not for the Now, it, this, put it this way. This, this program is to help the residents. That's one objective. The second objective is to allow accounting students hands-on experience on how to file taxes, right? So if okay. you are an accounting student, especially if you're on the tax side, you want to have experience filing your taxes. I mean, other okay. than fact, uh, filing your own taxes, this is an opportunity for them to look at other taxes and and get them more acclimated in the different taxes uh, experiences. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So, um, how do you become part of what? So, if, first of all, you, you need to be. Need. So, um, most likely, you most of those people involved in the in the VITA are accounting accounting majors. Now, is it required? No, it's not. Accounting, re accounting major is not required. However, they do require that you have taken federal income tax one. Now, in, in, if you need federal income tax one, you will need to take intermediate accounting one. So again, a lot of people think if that's the requirement, then it makes sense to be an accounting major, but you don't have, actually have to be an accounting major. As long as you can have intermediate one, and then you take tax one. After you take tax one, then in the spring, you can do the VITA. You can be part of the VITA. And that VITA will be part of the course load that you take, and it will count towards your program. It could. Make okay. sense? Yes, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Gabriel or Giovanni, any questions from you guys? Uh, I have questions about the scholarship. Yeah, sure. If, if you want to do MIS, would some of the scholarships be able to go into MIS? Um, the only the scholarship that I can think of is if you do MIS, the structured finance, because it's open to all business, that one is that one is that one. You, are, you can do it. You can stay eligible. And the other one is the, uh, the School of Business uh, and Public Administration scholarships. Those and are the, open to all business. The structure of finance today is the last day. So can I email you? That is chance? You can, you can, you can communicate with me and see if you can complete the application. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Any other question? How about Gabriel? Any question from you? Oh, I also have another question. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. For the MBA, is there any concentration for um, MIS from, or is just the MBA? From my understanding, from my understanding, there is, there is one offic official concentration, which is the international business concentration. Oh, okay. That one re will require you to take the additional business course. Yeah. And what about the GMAT? Do you need a score or how does that For work? now, I believe for now the GMAT is being waived because of okay. COVID. I believe it's being waived. So if you want, I don't know when we'll reinstate it. If you don't want to take the GMAT, then I suggest you start applying and get into the program 
before the thing gets reinstated. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Are you able to see the the applicants who um, applied for the structured? Because I want to say I applied, but I don't remember. I can. I can see it. I won't. I cannot see it now, but I can check and look. If you okay. want, you can shoot me an email. You can ask, and I'll I'll respond to your emails. Okay. Because I want to say I did as soon as you sent the first email, but just to make sure. Yeah, and then the thing is, remember, um, I also require the the application also require you to send me your your resume. And also have your res have your reference send me a letter of support. So mm -hmm. not just your application, your application right. can be done, but then if without those additional information, your 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 application is not complete and therefore will not be reviewed by the committee. Okay. Oh, thanks. So okay, I'll send you an email after. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Please follow up with the additional information because otherwise I can't help. I mean the committees won't review an incomplete application. That's again. That's why they 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 uh they they wanted this to have the information all in. Any other questions? Okay. So let me let me stop sharing. I mean, I'm sorry. Let's let me stop recording.